Hello everyone, this video is about 11 mind games that narcissistic people play to keep control of the relationship. Thank you very much and welcome back to all the returning subscribers. If you are new to the channel and you do find the information helpful, please do subscribe. So this video is about the different manipulative mind games that narcissistic people use to covertly gain and keep control over us without realising what's actually happening to us. So here are 11 examples of the most common mind games that narcissists play. One, love bomb. In a bid to control others as quickly as they can, narcissists often love bomb people, often with pressure for fast involvement of the relationships Parents, friends and narcissistic bosses can also love bomb by showering you with time, attention, flattery, gifts, grand gestures of what turn out to be false promises in the future as it's plans of the future. We don't recognise it in the present as it's not actually happened yet so we don't see it as a lie. Narcissists love bomb to lead us into believing in them. Often when they don't deliver, they find ways to then deflect the blame away from themselves or gaslight us into believing we've imagined it or we no longer deserve it. Like crossing a road, sometimes in life we have to stop, take a step back from the situation, listen to what's happening, look at what's happening and listen again. When we see no cars, when we hear no sound, we cross with caution, still looking and still listening. We have to do the same with those rushing us into relationships, showering us with attention. Narcissistic people are very good at listening to us in the beginning, making it all about us then as soon as they have us figured out those tables turn and it's all about them stop slow down listen and see when something doesn't feel right it usually isn't always listen to those instincts mirror when a narcissist mirrors, it's done on a conscious level as they study their targets to purposefully collect data then reflect back what we want to hear often accompanied with that future faking some will listen to us for hours as we try to be honest with them in the beginning we enter a relationship with that openness and that honesty not wanting any secrets to come back down the road not understanding that they're not coming from the same place that we are so some will listen to us for hours collecting that data on us. Some will stalk our social media. Others will ask family and friends about us. They are literally gathering data. As a narcissist lacks in their own authentic personality, they are testing ours, using borrowed love statements from movies, from past relationships, borrow dreams from those around them they want to build up your hopes which creates that trauma bond it creates that hope that if we just stay a little longer we might get those promises of the past so when their mask slips and their envious face comes out in full force they will then project their negative qualities onto us so we doubt ourselves they downplay their toxic behavior and exaggerate things we haven't even done to get us to conform to their demands to walk away from those false promises not understanding that it was something they were never going to deliver in the first place as we begin to walk on eggshells around them trying to please them trying to make that future work for both of us not understanding that the narcissist is working against us mirroring is simply an illusion as narcissists sell us those dreams of what we want to hear and once hooked they begin to devalue us in horrific ways 
idolize with their false promises of the future, the future faking to create a vision of an ideal future together. A narcissist is preoccupied with power and success and they make those big pictures within their minds of the ideal of what they would like and they borrow ideals of what other people would like to sell it to that person to be able to manipulate and control that person. So it's often based from the mirroring stage so that it will seemingly be as though all your dreams are coming true. They often bring intermittent reinforcements of the idolization stage with the future faking to distract you from whatever's happening in the present, from whatever they've done to hurt you in the present, to give you the false hope, keeping you in a relationship way longer than you ever should be. Your dreams are for you. If someone is willing to walk with you as you would them and create those memories together, if someone wishes to join you on your journey in life and you wish to join them, that's that's fantastic. But if someone wishes to do them all for you or promise yet never seems to take any action, those people we need to walk away from. Flattery. A compliment is a polite expression of praise or admiration for a quality, an achievement, a look, etc. that someone genuinely admires within another person. Flattery is giving excessive or insincere praise to meet one's own purpose, which a narcissist will often do in the love bombing stage of the relationship or in the idolization stages of the relationship when they're offering those reinforcements of something that was never meant to be that's when they'll bring that flattery in a lot of the time with a lot of narcissistic people they don't offer many compliments and once they've got you sucked in they don't tend to offer much flattery a narcissist will flatter you so pay close attention they they don't give you genuine compliments they use flattery they use this tactic during the idolization stage. They find out your needs, your wants, your desires. Again, either checking your social media, talking to friends or family to get that information about you, those long, deep heart to hearts with you. And in the beginning, they seem sincere, but they are just gathering information about you. First to mirror you, then love bomb you idolize the relationship into something it'll never be to hook you in they use your insecurities to exploit you they will flatter you give you constant attention plan that fake future with you and they will love everything you do they will hate everything you hate and once you are hooked on the constant attention they'll slowly take it away to make you work harder to get it again they will get you to tell them all your secrets, all your insecurities, any mistakes you've made so they can further manipulate by one day using those very secrets against you any way they can. They will learn all your strengths so they can use them against you to make you doubt your own capabilities. We all make mistakes in life. It's a part of the learning process. A narcissist will pick out any mistake, real or or imagined by them, the things that you are great at, anything they can to bring you down or to intimidate you, to pull you down and make themselves feel better, to get you to question and doubt who you are. So we're the ones that end up chasing them for answers, not realizing that they're the ones that are causing us to doubt ourselves more and more in the first place. A narcissist will fish for compliments and they need these to boost their self-esteem, to boost their ego, to help them with their inflated ego. They will fish for compliments from family, friends, co-workers, children, anyone they can, social media, to keep their false selves and their ego going. It's more evident with an overt narcissist, but coverts do this also. Set the stage. They will set the environment. They will bait you into a situation or provoke you to get reactions from you. So they can then blame it all on you. They can then play the victim 
or use the silent treatment to get you to do things that you wouldn't otherwise do or to get you to think that these false promises of the future aren't coming true because of something you did. They are gaslighting you so that you are no longer sure of reality, often leaning on them for those reality checks. They will create a topic or an atmosphere to provoke other emotional responses. They will triangulate you. They will play you off against those around you to break you down, break down your boundaries or to make you feel guilt. They always have a hidden agenda. When it comes to things like special occasions, a narcissist, some do go all out to make the special occasion all about them and gain the attention. The majority of them do ruin special occasions. And narcissists will put you in a negative mood. They will find a way, either creating that atmosphere, creating those arguments, setting the stage. They will find some method to put you in a negative mood before an event and once they've got you in that negative state of mind they suddenly become happy again then when you arrive at the event you feel all off you feel all out of it the narcissist will often then walk in looking all smug and pleased and happy with themselves and they'll often be chatting to people behind your back saying how you didn't want to go or look at what they've got to put with look at what a mood you're in and because people don't see the lead up they just see you in that state of mind and they see the narcissist all happy then when it comes to another event that the narcissist doesn't want to go to they will claim that it's you that doesn't want to go so to the outside world you are the one that looks like you are always in that negative mood and the narcissist always looks like they are the life and the soul of the party because people don't see the lead up to the events. Sometimes when a narcissist is gaslighting you, keeping a diary helps so that you can go back and check on events and you can ask yourself what genuinely happened, what your feelings were, what feelings were theirs, what feelings of theirs did they pass on to you? How did the day actually start? As things like this lead on to their triangulation, where they will gossip about people. You find narcissistic people often gossip about everybody, often trying to get others to gossip with them, because if they've got someone gossiping with them, that person then can't go and tell the people that the narcissist is gossiping because that person will feel the guilt and the shame for joining in. A narcissist might feel shame in the moment, but they will quickly pass the blame onto the other person. They, The more they gossip with people, they can go to other people and tell people what someone else has said that that triangulation is a way to divide and conquer people hence others only trust in the narcissist and start to distance themselves from friends and family that might not have even said anything in the first place or People see that negative person around the narcissist and distance themselves from the negative person and lean more towards what the narcissist is saying about that person. Sometimes a narcissist can make something up completely and tell one person and that person will then react to what the narcissist has told them that someone else said about them, which the narcissist will then take that reaction back to the other person often with added words. So what starts off as a narcissist lie slowly becomes half truths as the narcissist gets those around them to defend themselves against what wasn't even said in the first place, but then comes something that has been said because people do defend themselves. And even though it was the narcissist who was the one that created the situation in the first place, they go around gathering as much information about others as possible to use it against people. They twist the story, they lie, they tell half-truths and they plant the gossip on people. As well as triangulation, they will use jealousy. The narcissist 
is extremely envious. One of their character traits is that envious. They are jealous of people. So they may go all out complimenting others in front of you, especially about things that you feel insecure about within yourself. So if you question them, you'll get the gaslighting phrases of you're too sensitive, you're over overreacting. They will undermine you in front of others and they've probably already smeared your name to other people so that you do look like the crazy one to other people. When they undermine you in front of other people, it it brings you down. It puts you in that state of mind where you're not being yourself. And people do pick up on other people's energy. So you then come across as the one that's not always happy let's say and the narcissist always comes across as jovial and joking and having a laugh and having a mess around a narcissist will purposefully flirt in front of someone else and then gaslight you by saying that you're reading too much into the situation to bring you crashing down to make you work harder to please them They will use your empathy against you. They will bargain with you and pity play to get you to do things you wouldn't usually do or to make you feel guilty into doing things you wouldn't usually do. They may compare you with someone else who has done something to try and break down your boundaries or say things like, if you loved me, you would or remember when I did this for you or you owe me because of that thing I did for you then. This is all guilt tripping you and projecting to either make you not feel as good as others or so that you conform to their demands or make you feel like you owe them something. They will guilt trip you in passive aggressive ways. They will sulk, they will silent treatment to get you to break down your boundaries. They will blame shift it onto you. They will project what they're feeling and thinking onto you and then they will distort your reality by gaslighting you, by getting you to question your own memory or question what happened to lead up to them giving you the silent treatment to make you feel like you're to blame for their silent treatment even though they are just trying to break down a boundary within you creating arguments about what you should or should not have done or could have done better for the narcissist then falling slight silent so that you blame yourself for that argument creating arguments so that you react and when you react they fall silent and you blame yourself and break down that boundary they will either talk you out of doing something that they seem as successful to sabotage you Or they will talk you into doing something and they will make out they know you better than you know yourself. And within that mirroring stage, because it seems like they understand you like no one has ever understood you before, it genuinely seems like they understand you better than you understand yourself. And they explain through many manipulative ways why you should or should not do something. Things like, you could never do that, or bargaining method, if you loved me, you would. They will covertly say, are you sure that's for you? Or I think this is more suited for you, especially narcissistic parents, because those that want you to achieve in something often don't want you to achieve in what your hopes dreams and wishes are they want you to achieve in what the narcissistic parents dreams are they want to live through you they want you to achieve what they want you to achieve and not what you want to achieve for yourself if you try and step out and achieve things for yourself this is often when you become the scapegoat of the family because they will shift anything negative that happens within the family dynamics on to you because you're not doing as they please. Playing the victim. They will play the victim, the covert narcissist more than the overt, but depending on the situation and what they gain from someone attention-wise by playing the victim card, most narcissists will use this tactic at some point. This gets your sympathy and 
you empathize with them as you can put yourself in someone else's shoes so you want to reach out and protect and help them any way you can which will lead to you losing who you indeed are over time they will then play the victim to others for how crazy you are and how they're doing all they can to help you false promises they will promise you things and then not deliver to try and get reactions out of you for which they can then blame your reactions for why they didn't do it when using false promises they will also use it to manipulate you more through gaslighting and leave you even more confused about reality with the i never said that i'd never promise that you must be imagining things or i did that last month for you how can you not remember of course they didn't as they they never do slowly but surely leaving you doubting yourself more and more sucking you back in the hoover when they try to suck you back in stalking you reaching out to friends and family miss calls miss messages false apologies or because the new person isn't working out as well as they first hoped don't ever get your hopes up when they do things like this they they try to discard the new by leaving the door open so that they can triangulate you both or so that you both work harder to win the narcissist affection often due to the trauma bond my best advice when they are trying to hoover you is let them go they are not worthy of you they are not good enough for you you can do so much better lose your pride and lose your ego to save yourself pity the fool that ends up with a manipulative narcissist that's just using them as they used you often we can begin to compare ourselves to the new person and when we are comparing ourselves to the new person we then create that competition within our own lives when we feel bad we have the empathy so when we use that to feel bad for the new person and hope that they manage to see sooner than we did we manage then to step away from the situation it's about finding the perception within your own mind that works for you often though when we are comparing ourselves to other people that is only ever going to bring us down or create that competition and when it's a competition over a narcissist because narcissistic people are very good at creating that trauma bond creating that jealousy creating that setting that environment to pull people into those games to create that competition and when we get drawn into that we are the ones left feeling hurt and the only person that's winning is the narcissist and it is all those manipulative mind games that have been played behind the scenes that cause us to fall into their trap so we have to find the perception to step away and until we've got the realization that it is purely a game on the narcissist's behalf that we've been drawn into we have to find the perception that works for us to pull us away from the game into our own lane to create a life that works for us the smear campaign the smear campaign is the narcissist protection as they lie to others about what they've been doing to other people which indeed is most often precisely what the narcissist has done to us the smear campaign is when a narcissist will destroy you any way they can when they can no longer control you they will try and control how others see you a narcissist will do this through exaggeration twisting the story of what they did to you yet telling others you did to them lies slander spreading rumors and much much more the narcissist uses this may campaign so that they can keep their negative toxic behaviors hidden so we look like we're jealous or going crazy so that we look like we're wanting to win the narcissist back or wanting to seek some form of revenge on the narcissist and a narcissist is very good at conning people because when you have been exploited it is perfectly normal to feel the emotion of anger and resentment and to want to seek revenge on someone so because they've provoked that emotion within you 
when they are then telling people you want this, the stories then match up with those people around you, which is why it's vital you step away from the games and heal who you are from within and no longer play their games. As a narcissist uses the smear campaign to make us look like we've gone crazy or that we're obsessed with them. They will either play the hero that tried so hard to help us and as we're often left with anxiety and depression and a shell of our former selves, it matches what the narcissist is telling other people. Or they'll be playing the victim of how we no longer allow them to see the children or that we abuse them in some way. They'll exploit others by using their empathy against them. They will gather enablers and fly monkeys if they can. They will tell anyone who will listen anything that they did to us, only they'll be making out to others that we did it to them. So they can shift the blame and escape accountability and walk free from taking any responsibility. The best way to beat a narcissist playing games with your happiness, your dreams, your livelihood, your friendships, your family, your career, your health, your name, your freedom is to safely step away and no longer play. They find it very difficult when you're not feeding them the attention they believe they deserve. Just like the saying, although sometimes there is smoke without fire but just like the saying there's no smoke without fire there's no flames without oxygen so a narcissist can create a smoke screen without the fire starting to burn because you're no longer giving them your attention to feed the flames rumors gossip etc things like when people are gossiping about you when people are spreading rumors they quieten down a lot faster when we no longer play narcissists lose attention a lot quicker when they're no longer getting the attention they believe they're entitled to as always it is on a spectrum your safety and happiness comes first if you need to go to the authorities do so gather any evidence you can whatever you do your safety comes first. But when it comes to a narcissist, the best thing you can do, as difficult it is, is to no longer play their games. It's human nature to want to defend ourselves. But often with how a narcissist manipulates situations, uh, the way we defend ourselves often plays straight into their hands. Our best defense mechanism against these kinds of people is just no longer playing their games, moving on, creating our own life. It's not easy. It is a step by step process, but it is possible. We just have to take it day by day by day and start noting your progress as you go through your days. Start finding the things that work for you as a person, as an individual. I shall add in the description the links to the online courses and I'll add the video for what a relationship with a narcissist is truly like. Thank you very much for listening and I hope everyone has an amazing day. Remember to do three things for you today. Three things that make you happy. Three things that make you smile. Three things, no matter how big, no matter how small, it doesn't matter. Just do three things for you and give yourself the credit that you've achieved those three things today. Thank you for listening. Bye.